let's face it, pretty much every CNC machine comes with one of these. Hi everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about lost steps. Inevitably, those of us who build our own machines are sooner or later going to come across this problem. What I want to do is go through common causes of lost steps and how to fault find it. The most important part about it is carrying out a very careful methodical testing to establish the root cause of your issue. Simply rushing in and changing settings all over the place is not going to fix your problem and it's just going to cause you more grief than you really want to think about. So let's have a look at my machine and I'll show you how I would go through trying to locate the source of lost steps. So here's the z-axis on my machine. What I'm going to do is quickly go through what the most common issues can be that can cause you to lose steps. First of all we've got our linear rail system to consider. In my case I'm using V-bearings. They could be binding. Then I have my lead screw here. It could be binding on the anti-backlash nut. Then I have my end bearings. In my case I have two bearings at the top and no end bearing. But they could be misaligned, they could be faulty, they could be binding. Then we have our coupler. The coupler could be slipping. That's a pretty common one. And then of course we have our stepper motor. The stepper motor could actually genuinely be missing steps because of the driver or computer issue. The trick is to come up with some method of testing that is methodical so that you can effectively test and eliminate what is good and then allows you to concentrate on where the problem really is. The first question we have to ask ourselves when we start losing steps is have I been cutting 3D models for a while now and this issue has just started or have up until now I only been doing 2D 2.5D machining and now I've decided to do 3D machining I am starting to lose steps on my z-axis. The first one indicates I've probably got an issue with my mechanicals. The second one indicates I either have an issue with my mechanicals or I may not be set up correctly in Mac 3 or whatever control software that I'm using. 3D machining really puts the z-axis through its paces and will show up any weakness you have there. Having said all this, the worst you can thing you can do is assume. I, the other, uh, a few weeks ago I tried machining this particular model and I noticed that my start depth of cut here was slightly different to my end depth of cut when the model was finished. The assumption I would have made, or did make, is that I had a, a mechanical issue because I've machined quite a few 3D models. I don't do a lot of it, but I've never really had an issue with it. In the end, through testing, I found the issue was not mechanical, but in actual fact, my stepper motor driver's PC combination. I now have a fix to the issue and can machine these without any problems but it doesn't always follow the rules. I've probably been you losing steps for years when machining 3D models and because in this case it is just so subtle the model looks good it's just on a slight angle and I'm only talking half a millimeter here between start and finish of the model but nonetheless it was losing steps and following proper fault finding techniques you can get to the bottom of any issue. So step one in our fault finding procedure is we have to come up with a method of testing. Don't go and write yourself a file 
that lifts the cutter 0.1 of a millimeter or one millimeter and then drops it to a millimeter and so on up and down that is not going to get you anywhere you've already got what you need to do the testing you've got the file that you tried cutting that failed use that you know it fails that's the best thing to use next we need a method of testing that uh, isn't going to waste a lot of wood and all the rest of it so <clears throat> we don't want to be machining real timber to find out whether we're losing steps or not the best way of doing it is to do ear cuts that way you're not wasting material but we can go a bit further than that because it's our z-axis is losing steps what I did for my testing is I went into Mac 3 and I disabled the X and Y axis. What this did is it allowed me to set the machine, the, the carriage here in one particular location, run my file, and all it did was just lift it and dropped the Z axis up and down. That gives me a full mechanical test of the router and by measuring the start height before I start and the finished height I could see that I was losing steps. Also there's an even easier way of checking that you, use, that you are losing steps. Instead of measuring the height of your cutter when you're finished or the router when you're finished if your stepper motor is like this one and has a shaft at each end simply get a felt pen set your cutter set, set the the router to the height you want and call that position zero do measure it make sure it's correct and then with a felt pen put a reference mark on the shaft here and on the body when you that's where you start position and when you finish and return this to zero those two lines should line up if they don't line up you're losing steps. The reason you want to um, actually set the cutter to a, a height that you can check later is to ensure that when you check this here for lost steps if the two lines meet up you need to double check the bottom to ensure that it hasn't lost one entire revolution. It's pretty unlikely but you never know. Uh, if Murphy's a bit of a strange one and he'll try and trip you up any way he can so that's just a, a second check to make sure that you are or aren't losing steps now if you're like me and don't have a shaft coming out the back of your stepper motor all is not lost using a marker on the back shaft is by far the best option but the next best thing is to come down to the coupler on my machine here what I've done is I've drawn a line when my axis when my uh, router was set at the height that I wanted to call Z0 by utilizing the latest in technology the stick I can take the stick push it hard up against the coupler like so and check the little lines with my mark. Once I've finished machining my 3D model I can come back put my stick up against there and I can instantly see whether I've lost steps or not. It is really very very obvious if I've lost any steps as you can see there. So that's the next best thing to use in the rear shaft on the motor. The advantage of using the rear shaft is it eliminates the possibility that you're slipping up here where the coupler here joins to the motor. So I've now set my z-axis to zero and as you can see my stick is in alignment with the mark that I have drawn on here. I've loaded my horsehead file and in pins and ports 
I have disabled the X, Y and A motors on my machine. So the only axis that will be moving for this cut will be the Z. I can now start my file and let it run. Now this would normally take two hours to run, but because I've removed the X, Y and A motor, disabled them in pins and ports, this here will now run a lot quicker than it did before. And we'll find that our two hour file will now be done in about 20 minutes. Now this in no way affects the Z motor motion. The speeds of the Z are governed by your tuning parameters within Mac 3. So it doesn't matter whether we've got our A working, uh, our X and Y working or not, it will not affect this test. The only exception to that rule is if your issue is power related and you do not have enough power to drive all your motors at once. At the end of our machining, I simply select go to zero, take my stick, put up against the coupler, and there you have it. You can see I've lost steps. The coupler should have been sitting here. It's sitting over here. So that's lost steps. And now I need to go further and see if I can figure out why. Unfortunately, because of where I'm testing here, I don't know whether I'm losing steps at the coupler, where it connects to the motor here, or whether I've got binding further down on my axis. We now need to come up with a test that will prove that. What I've done is I've pulled the stepper motor from the z-axis, and I've put a mark here, and a corresponding mark on the shaft. I've aligned that and I've called that Z0. I'm now going to rerun my file. If when I finish this here, I find that my marks no longer align when I set the thing back to zero, I know the issue is from the stepper motor back to my computer. If those marks do align, then the problem is mechanical with the z-axis itself. Now, having gone to the trouble of pulling it out, I would run this file a couple of times. If if those lines mark, uh, if those marks lined up the first time, I'd probably run it just a couple more times just to be 100% sure before I put it back together, because it takes a bit of work to get it apart and put it back together. So uh, it's just the sort of thing I'd like to be double or triple sure that uh, this test is correct. My machining is now finished. And now I'm gonna go tell it to go back to zero. There. And here's the mark off to one side. There's my reference mark there. So my stepper motor is losing steps it's my, my issue is not mechanical. It's to do with my stepper motor PC combination. It doesn't mean there isn't still a mechanical issue, but I can clearly see there is an issue here before we get to the mechanical. And when it comes to fault finding, you must always work on the assumption you've only got one problem at a time. Fix that, then move on. So I need to fix this issue first before I move on, put it back together and retest it again with the mechanicals attached. Having established that we're losing steps at the motor and not the mechanical side of things, the next most likely source of issue is here in the motor tuning movement profile for the axis in question. The three items that we are interested in here is the velocity, the acceleration, and the pulse duration here for both step and direction. 
I set mine to the maximum setting. That way I can always be sure that my drives will get the correct pulse width. It doesn't matter if the pulse width is wider than specified. It is really important though that it never be smaller than specified. Of these two settings, the one that's going to cause me the most grief is the acceleration. That is the speed at which the motor ramps up to maximum speed. If you've got this set too high, you are liable to lose steps. The velocity will determine the maximum speed at which the motor will reach and it will uh, uh, if you set this too high as it approaches its top speed you may lose steps. When you're running a 3D profile it's unlikely you'll get anywhere close to the top speed unless you've got it set really low. Usually with 3D you've got a lot of quick up and down movements and this is the one that actually really does that so just make sure you don't set that too high. I've got mine set at 300 millimeters per second that's not inches so that's about 12 inches a second acceleration. For testing I tend to just lower that to say 5 inches uh, 5 inches or 125 millimeters per second and see what that did for me. The thing is you need to test each of these parameters here change them see what the effect is just rerun re your file and see the, the results you get. So having followed my own advice and reduced the speeds of the acceleration and velocity on my uh, in Mac 3 I then did some more testing and found that those actually made it worse. Now that's incredibly unusual normally it will fix an issue of lost steps. For me that means there's something else wrong and I had to do further testing. Now if you do reduce those uh, velocity and acceleration on your machine and you find that you're now no longer losing steps that's great but I would tend to do that before removing the motor just as a matter of course and the reason behind that is that by slowing down a stepper motor you increase its power. The faster a stepper motor goes the more the weaker it becomes. In actual fact a stepper motor you'll notice is rated by its holding torque. That's when it's doing nothing it has its most power. So by reducing those settings you can actually overcome mechanical issues that you might have but one thing you do need to check is that those mechanical issues that you're having are, are not actual real issues. For instance, there may just be too much weight here for a smaller motor to move up and down, in which case slowing the motor down fixes the issue. You do really need to check that there is no binding on your lead screw, there is no binding on your linear rail system, your end bearings. Just make sure that all of those look good nothing's out of alignment and then use the lower settings for your stepper motor. In my case uh, I had to do some more testing and eventually got to the bottom of the issue. Between my Gecko drive and my laptop is a smooth stepper and that generates all the pulses I need to run the drive. Now there's nothing wrong with the smooth stepper, I say that up, up front, I'm running the latest uh, drivers for it and everything, but what happened is years ago when the Gecko drive originally came out, there was an issue with some of the drives where they did not meet their specs for the step duration pulse. And the solution to it was simply to set your uh, PC to use shear line mode which would fix that issue. What I didn't realize is the smooth stepper does not use shear line mode. It generates its own pulse durations to the drives which far exceed what the Gecko drive requires uh, unless it has the fault that mine has. And I have two of those drives and they both have the same issue. 
I found that by going back in time and using the last of the beta plugins for the Smooth Stepper, I overcame my issue. A big thanks to the guys on the Smooth Stepper forum for their help in getting to the bottom of what this issue is. So simply by changing my plugin back to the old beta version, I now have my machine running perfectly fine for 3D machining. So it is important to follow methodical methods of testing. Don't, don't go jumping about, don't go guessing. Do tests, if you can't eliminate something as working wrong, try and eliminate what you know is working right until you're finally left with what has to be wrong no matter how strange it may seem because uh, to be honest I would not have guessed the final result that I got to here and basically that's all there is to uh, fault finding missteps on a CNC machine it is quite a complex task but you break it down you'll get there in the end and you'll be able to fix it usually fixing an issue is the easy part. Finding it is the hard part. Well I hope that's been useful to you guys and that you never need to use the information in this video on your own machine. Me, I like to keep my gremlins where I can see them. If you've enjoyed this video please remember to like it. If you haven't already done so please subscribe. In the meantime thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.